grammar section the question C where you are told to join with and don't uh, join with and but and so join with any other words not these three words so what does synthesis really mean synthesis means combining or joining and that is why yes you need to have a knowledge that's very true so and but and so these three are Compound, these three are conjunctions with which we make compound sentence. That means we are free to go for simple to simple. That means joining two simple sentences into one simple sentence or joining two simple sentences into a complex sentence which is easier or with uh, leaving apart these three uh, conjunctions. We can go for the other conjunctions and make them compound sentence. So let's get to work. Simple to simple sentence. There are six methods, six ways. Like we can do it with the help of a participle by using a participle. Like uh, he received a letter. He felt very happy. Receiving the letter or receiving a letter, he felt very happy. So participle here the present participle is ing so by adding ing to the verb remember the participle gerund and infinitives they are not real verbs they are non-finite verbs so they don't get the honor of being called a real verb so if we make one of the verb a participle change it into a participle then your work is done like he saw the tiger he ran away Seeing the tiger, saw and ran, two verbs. Seeing the tiger, he ran away. Simple, isn't it? Let's go to the next one. Infinitive, another non-finite verb. Two, and after two comes your verb. And remember, the verb should be in the present tense form. So, I have engaged a private tutor. He will coach my daughter in English. I have engaged a private tutor. He will coach my daughter in English. So we can do it with infinitive. I have engaged a private tutor to coach. Coach is the verb. Before it we put that infinitive to. To coach my daughter in English. Simple. We have only one verb. Uh, engaged. Uh, yeah. Engaged is the only verb here. So it's a simple sentence. We are joining into a simple sentence because here we are dealing with simple to simple. Now the third one. Third one is a noun or phrase in apposition. So this is easier. Like suppose uh, Aurangzeb was the son of Shah Jahan. Aurangzeb was the son of Shah Jahan. Aurangzeb got his brothers killed or he got his brothers killed. So in noun or phrase in apposition, what do we do? We can uh, eliminate the verb. Aurangzeb, comma, the son of Shah Jahan. Son of Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb refer to the same person. Aurangzeb, comma, the son of Shah Jahan got his brothers killed. Aurangzeb, comma, the son of Shah Jahan got his brothers killed. So one verb we have eliminated and we have only the other verb killed. Lord Nelson died at sea. He was the hero of the Battle of Trafalgar. So Lord Nelson, the hero of Traf the Battle of Trafalgar. Yeah, so hero of the Battle of Trafalgar and Lord Nelson, they refer to the same person. Yes, he was the hero in that battle and he died also. So Lord Nelson, comma, the hero of the Battle of Trafalgar died at sea so only one verb is died so this is also a simple sentence so we have got three participle infinitive noun or phrase in apposition and the next one is absolute phrase it is quite similar to the participle one like the sun uh, set we uh, stopped our journey the sun having set we stopped our journey the sun rose, we resumed our journey. 
the sun having risen, we resumed our journey. Uh, he was, uh, let's see the another sentence. The ship sank, the crew were drowned. The ship having sunk, the crew were drowned. And not only that, we can, if there is, a, what should we say? If there is a sentence where we have is, like he was bitten by a snake, he died. So being bitten was, you can't say now wasing, ising. We can't say that or aiming. So what do we do instead? These all fall under the be verb. So being bitten by a snake, he died. Being bitten by a snake, being is not a verb, absolute phrases. And now let's come to the next one, the fifth one. Preposition with noun or gerund. You know what a gerund is? Gerund is a verbal noun like prep, uh, participles are verbal adjectives. That means when the verb, instead of doing the function of a verb, it does the function of an adjective. We called it a participle. And when a verb, instead of doing the function of a verb, it does the function of a noun, we call it a gerund. So gerunds are also ing, participles are also, present participles are also ing. So here preposition by using preposition with noun or gerund, like the sentence is, I gave him a rupee, I felt very happy. On, on is a preposition. On giving him a rupee, I felt very happy. On giving him, giving, 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 gerund, on giving him a rupee, I felt very happy. Everyone opposed him, he did not give up his resolution. Everyone opposed him, full stop. He did not give up his resolution. So we uh, can also use uh, prepositional phrases like in spite of. So in spite of opposition from everyone, in spite of prepositional phrase, then comes here opposition, which is a noun. So in spite of opposition from everyone, he did not give up his resolution. Got it? We can use prepositional phrases also. Quite a few are there. And uh, then we come to the last one, adverbs or adverbials. Mane adverbs means a word adverb. Adverbial can be your adverbial phrases. Adverb phrases. They are your adverbials. Like, beware of that person. Full stop. Beware of that person. This is of first importance. So how do we do it? We'll add an adverbial, use an adverbial. First and foremost, beware of that person. First and foremost, beware of that person. Only verb is beware. The next one, he did not attend the function. That was his intention. He did not attend the function, full stop. That was his intention. So let's uh, do it with a one worded adverb. Let's do it with an adverb, not an adverbial. So he did not attend the function intentionally. Intentionally is your adverb. Got it? So we have discussed all the six ways in which we can change one, uh, two simple sentences, which we can join two simple sentences into one simple sentence. The others are the others in which other ways in which we can join yours, uh, we can join our sentences are changing them into a complex sentence. We can join and make them a compound sentence, but at the same time we have to be careful because and but and so is there in your compound. So you go for the other conjunctions. There are so many. So I'll discuss them in a nutshell the compound ones because three of them though are already the uh, very important ones are and and but so they are gone so is gone so we'll uh, talk a little about the rest and are changing into complex sentence of course they are important why because in complex sentence what happens we have one main clause 
and the other clauses they are subordinate clause what does subordinate mean someone who is under dependent dependent clauses so these three clauses are noun clause adjective clause and adverb clause they are called the subordinate clauses so in complex sentence we have one main clause and it could the other clauses they could be a noun clause or an adjective clause or an adverb clause and they are dependent on the main clause uh, for example if i were to say he is a rich man he is a rich man he donated all his money to a charitable institution so he is a rich man who donated all his money to a charitable institution so who donated this portion is your adjective clause why because it is describing the noun man got it he is a man who donated all his money to a charitable institution like you will have noun clause most of the, give you a, a secret most of the noun clauses they begin with that so we join the noun clause to the main clause and what what are these clauses actually a clause definition wise a clause is a group of words which has a subject and predicate of its own but we need to join it to a bigger sentence so that it get its gets its complete meaning like if i were to say just who donated all his money to a charitable institution it does not make complete sense unless we add it to the main clause he is a rich man unless we add the who portion to this clause it doesn't get its complete meaning so this is doing the function of an adjective and as such it is called an adjective clause the same for noun clause they will perform the function of a noun but not in one word in a clause manner with a subject and predicate of its own and same for the adverb clauses they will also do the function of an adverb yet they will not uh, they will have a subject and predicate of its own so it will be a group of words not one word only so let's discuss some uh, sentences let's solve some sentences to get a proper picture wait so simple to complex we have a main clause and then the subordinate clause and the subordinate clause we have noun clause adjective clause and adverb clause so let's do some sentences he told me that he, he told me full stop he had topped in the exam full stop he told me something full stop he had topped in the exam full stop he told me that told what that he had topped in the exam so this is your he told me what 
that he had topped in the examination. So this is your noun clause. Another one, there should be no grammatical errors in your answer. Always remember this. There should be no grammatical errors in your answers. Full stop. Always remember this. Well, this is a question. So always remember that there should be no grammatical errors in your answers. This is also applicable to y'all in your essays, in your letters and in your literature answers. Be aware of your grammatical errors because you will lose your marks in the process. Okay, now let's proceed. Now we come to the adjective clause. Adjective clause, I have told you so many times that the adjective clause is a clause which describes a noun or a pronoun and they are placed next to the noun or pronoun and uh, they do the function, same function as that of an adjective describing the noun. So, I saw the boy, he had won a medal. I saw the boy who had won a medal, who, which, they are your adjective clauses. You need them to frame your adjective clause. And this is the car, full stop, my father bought it. This is the car which my father bought. So two of your adjective clause, they are the easiest, isn't it? Now what remains is our adverb clause. Adverb clauses again, I don't need to tell that they do the function of an adverb in a sentence. So the teacher entered the class, the boy stopped shouting. The teacher entered the class, the boy stopped shouting. So the boy stopped shouting when the teacher entered the class. The boy stopped shouting when the teacher entered the class. We can also say, as soon as the teacher entered the class, the boy stopped shouting. Another one is, you will succeed, full stop, work hard, full stop. You will succeed if you work hard. Or you can put it the other way, if you work hard, you will succeed, comes to the same, isn't it? So we are done with our complex sentence. And now what remains? Compound how to join two simple sentences into a compound. So they have made us a little bit of handicap by uh, asking us not to join with and, but and so. These are the three conjunctions with which we normally join quite common conjunctions. But so what? We have other conjunctions with which we can join the sentences like uh, and. Instead of and we can use as well as. I'll give you an example. He goes to school, full stop. His brother goes to school, full stop. So he and both he and his brother go to school. We can also join it. Okay, leave aside and we can also join it in this way. He as well as his brother goes to school. Okay, and uh, same for but. Instead of but, we can use nevertheless. We can use yet, still. He is poor, full stop. He is happy, full stop. So, he is poor, but he is happy. So, if we don't use but, not a big problem. He is poor, still he is happy. Nevertheless, he is happy. And also, many times we can use however instead of but. I always advise my students when they are writing an answer, don't begin your answers with what? With but, sorry, with but. Instead, you can put however. Because but is a conjunction and if we begin with but, it sounds very odd. See, you might tell that you have seen uh, many famous men of literature, authors. Uh, Shakespeare also does the same. But see, they have become famous. So no one will find their faults or they won't get their marks deducted. But if you do, your marks will be obviously deducted, no doubt about it. So don't begin your sentences with but. What I have noticed in the copies of my students, I'm pointing that to you because y'all are in the same age group. So don't begin your sentences with but. Okay. Uh, when it is a question of a choice, we can join the two simple sentences with either or, neither nor. Like uh, he will go, full stop, I will go. Either he or I will go. 
when it is negative both of them are negative he did not come to school his sister did not come to school neither he nor his sister came to school we can go for neither nor he did not uh, write a letter uh, neither uh, he did not call neither did he write a letter nor call and when it is a question of inference we find that uh, there is something to be inferred like he was found guilty he was found guilty full stop he was punished so normally we would go for so so but when we are not supposed to use so we can use therefore he was found guilty therefore he was punished so it's not a problem so these three leave them at peace we can do with the rest and with that our video on synthesis or our lesson on synthesis comes to an end